discussing about uh, what is government so this word you might have heard about government various times you will see it in newspaper and uh, in te television channels so in this, this discussion we will talk about what government is and what is the importance of government in our lives what uh, is expected out of government how they decide what to do what is the difference between different type of governments like the monarchies and democracies etc so these are some cuttings like government sought to protect right of unorganized workers detailed plan to tackle flood soon say government so this is how government we will see about them what work is or what how we elect them or how they become the facility provider like the supreme court has can have five more judges this government has said over 15000 villages declared scarcity hit by government government for revamping or government is revamping coal and power sector so every country needs a government to make decisions and get things done like in your family you have your grandfather or a father so they are more experienced they have power they have money and uh, now they can decide for us who who like i am i am a child and i'm just uh, taking classes i cannot decide on my own so i need someone in my family similarly when we talk about a country we need government so these can be decisions about where to build roads and schools or how to reduce the price of onions when they get too expensive or the tomatoes or ways to increase the supply of electricity so the government also takes action on many social issues for instance it uh, launches several programs to help the poor it does other things such as running postal and railway services so the government also has the main job to protect the boundaries of the country that is national security and maintaining peaceful relationship with other countries and it is responsible for ensuring that all its citizens have enough to eat and they are having good health facilities so when there are natural disasters like the tsunami or earthquake it is government that mainly organizes aid and assistance for the affected people so if there is a dispute or if someone has committed a crime you find people in court and courts are a part of government only uh, you may be wondering how government manages to do all these things and why it is necessary for them to do when human beings uh, live and work together there needs to be some amount of organization planning so that decisions can be made right so some rules have to be made that apply to everyone for instance there is a need to control the resources and protect the territory of the country so people feel secure governments do this on behalf of their people by exercising leadership taking decisions and implementing these among all the people living in their territory this is the supreme court uh, these are the some example of the institutions that are part of government this is the supreme court this is indian railways this is bharat petroleum so what are the levels of government now well you are aware of the government which we just talked about now you know that the government is responsible for the different aspects different things so how do the government is responsible or how does it manage so the government work at different levels at the local level at the level of the state and the national level so the local level means in your in your village your town or locality the state level would mean that which covers the entire state like say you know we have 29 states and each state you can take like haryana and assam and the national level relates to the entire country the whole country the federal uh, word you can use we will uh, talk about uh, how local level government functions and how you go into the next few uh, discussions that how government will function uh, at the state level and central level so this is the national level delhi is our capital so you'll find the government mainly you know in this 
location means we have parliament here uh, we have various ministries here the people or the elected uh, ministers sit here in our country because our country is democracy and these are the state level we have 29 state and various these are uh, seven union territories so these union territories means they are governed by the central center that is uh, national level but means from the central government and others have their own people choose their elect their state level government also means state level they choose the uh, vidhayaks or legis legislators member of uh, legislative assembly and then these members choose a chief minister the way there is a prime minister the laws rules and the government so government makes laws and everyone who lives in the country has to follow this and this is the only way government can function just like the government has the power to make decisions it has the power to enforce these decisions as well for instance there is a law that says that all person driving a motor vehicle must have a license dl driving license so any person caught driving a vehicle without a license can either be jailed or fined a large sum of money so without these laws the government power or government's power to make decision is not of much use you can think of an example of another law what do you think it is important that people abide by this law we'll talk about these when we are doing the question answers we'll answer this so in addition to take to any actions that government can take there are also steps that people can take if they feel that a particular law is not being followed if a per person feel for example that they are not hired for a job because of their religion and caste uh, he or she may approach the court and claim that law is not being followed or enforced so the court can then give orders about what should be done on the basis of the law so what are the type of government who gives the government this power to make decision and enforce law the answer to this question depends on the type of government there you have in your country so in a democracy like we have in india it is the people who give the government this power they do this through elections in which they vote for a particular person and they elect them so once elected these person they form the government in a democracy the government has to explain its action and defend its decision to the people so they are answerable to people people can ask they have to answer them so another form of government is monarchy monarchy that is you have a monarch say king or queen monarch has the power to make decisions and run the government the monarch may have a small group of people to discuss matters but but the final decision making power remains with the monarch itself which is not possible in democracy king and queen do not have to explain their actions or defend their actions they take because they are not they are not being elected by uh, people so this is an example of you know person showing uh, example and figure showing the monarch So again, uh, these questions we are going to do when we'll talk about the question answers of this topic. The democratic government, as I said, India is a democracy. So this achievement is the result of a long and eventful struggle of the Indian people. So there are other places in the world where people also have struggled to have democracies. The main feature of a democracy is that the people have the power to elect their leaders. So, in a sense, a democracy is ruled by the people. The basic idea is that people rule themselves by participating in making of these rules. So, democratic government in uh, in our times are usually referred to as a representative democracy. In a rep representative democracy, people do not participate directly, but instead they choose their representative through an election process. So, uh, before I, I go ahead. Uh, now uh, or you can say nowhere in the world have government willingly shared power all over europe and usa women and poor have had to fight for participation in the government's uh, women's struggle to vote got strengthened during the first world war so this movement is called women suffrage movement as the term suffrage usually means right to vote so during the war many men uh, many men were away fighting and because of 
this women were called upon to do work that was earlier considered men's work so many women began organizing and managing different kind of work so when people saw that this they began to wonder why they had created a many unfair stereotypes about women and what they were capable of doing they can do everything so women began to be seen be equally capable of making decision so the suffer suffer uh, you can say suffragettes demanded the right to vote for all women and to get their demands heard they changed themselves to railings in public places so many suffragettes were imprisoned and went to hunger strike when they had to be fed by the force so american women got the right of right to vote in 1920 while women in uk got the vote or got to vote on the same terms as men some years later that is 1928 so we were talking about the democracy we have selected the or we have choose chosen or elected the representative now these uh, representative they meet and make decision for the entire population this is the voting figure picture in rural area a mark is put on a finger to make sure that the person cast only one vote so these days a government cannot call itself democratic unless it allows that it is known as a universal adult franchise this means that all adults in the country are allowed to vote in india 18 plus you are 18 plus you are allowed to vote so but it it was not always like this you know can you ever believe that there was a time when government did not allow women and poor to participate in the elections in their earliest forms government allowed only men and who owned property and were educated to vote this meant that women the poor the property less and the uneducated were not allowed to vote the country was governed by the rules and regulation that these few men would make so in india before independence only a small minority was allowed to vote and they therefore came together to determine the fate of the majority so several people including uh, gandhi ji were shocked at the unfairness of this practice and demanded that all adults have the right to vote and this is known as universal adult franchise writing in the journal young india in 1931 gandhi ji said i cannot possibly bear bear the idea that a man who has got wealth should get the vote but a man who has got character but no wealth or literacy should have no vote or that a man who honestly works by the sweat of his brow day in and day out should not have the vote for the crime of being a poor man 